Hey guys, today we're gonna to be installing this water filtration system. This is a 20 inch by four and a half inch water filter designed for your whole home. The main reason that it's being installed is there's a large amount of sediment and total suspended solids in the water. This toilet was installed only last year and as you can see, this tank is coated in sediment. I purchased this kit on Amazon from Geek Pure and it is not a sponsored video. It includes a mounting bracket, 20 inch by four inch filter housing, a filter wrench, and bracket hardware. The housing is labeled in and out for direction of flow. I started with securing the mounting bracket to the housing with the included hardware. Next, I determine an accessible location for the housing, adding wood backing where needed and at a height that will make filter replacements easier. Most people's connections will vary, but for my inlet, I'm using a 3 quarter inch PEX by MIP adapter, 3 quarter inch ball valve, and a quarter inch gauge. For my outlet, I'm using a quarter inch gauge, half inch drain valve, 3 quarter inch ball valve and a 3 quarter inch PEX by MIP adapter. I'm going to tape and thread all these connections together before I mount the unit. If you're wondering why I'm taping and pipe doping each connection, it's because we've recently had some issues with the quality of brass fittings in our area and applying both seems to fix the issue. Please remember all piping, fittings, Teflon tape and pipe dope used must be potable water approved. I'm mounting the unit with my own supplied wood screws and washers, making sure that the unit is level. To add some extra stability, I'm also adding a couple of cushion clamps, one to each side. All right guys, we're looking pretty good here. Everything's secured. It's actually really secure. I could probably stand on this without a problem. If you're wondering why I didn't put the gauges in yet, I'm gonna be working above this unit and I just don't wanna bump into them and possibly break them. So I'll put them in at the very end. So we're pretty much ready to shut the water off and tie in. I have a pressure tank here or a submersible pump and you most likely will have a water meter but you just shut it off at the water meter. So right here, I have a half inch line coming off this actually goes to a cistern at the other side of the house. So I'm actually, it's not being used. I'm actually just gonna disconnect it and, and get rid of the line. And then we have our three quarter inch feed and this is what feeds the house or so cold water feed. It comes up here, goes to this awful looking header and then continues on to our water heater. So what I'm gonna do is cut that line. I'm actually gonna cap it right here. 
and then I'm gonna come off this side. I'm gonna 90 over. Well, it's gonna come up a bit, so I'll 90 over. Come across here. I'll put a T in because I want to have a bypass on this whole unit, and then I'll tie into this side. Come off this side to our other side of the bypass, and then at the top here, I'll, I'll just tie into the other side of the header. That line going that way is actually being used for the cistern as well, which I'll get rid of. Look at that awful shark bite. I do have to go through all this. You never, I don't mind shark bites, but you never want to have pressure on them. As you can see, there's a lot of tension on that, on that connection. It's one thing added to the list that I have to do. But eventually I want to move the headers actually to the wall and just mount them here. And then not on the ceiling, because if you look here, we have an electrical panel. And why the hell would you put the header above the electrical panel? That's ridiculous. And as you can see over here, the electrical is pretty rough shape. <laughs> I don't know who the hell put this in, but you know, you pretty much have 10 lines going into that one junction box. No clips holding anything. Everything's just a spaghetti factory. One thing I did tackle last year is the boiler. Put a brand new boiler in, all re redid the piping and controls. I unfortunately wasn't able to do an extended video on that because it was in the middle of winter and I was in a rush. But there's a short little time lapse video of that on the channel. All right, that's enough of that. Let's shut off the water and get started here. I'm shutting off the power from my well pump and opening a faucet to relieve the pressure. As I said before, you most likely have a water meter to shut off and not a well system. With the water shut off, I can now start cutting out any lines I'm not going to be using and tie into the filter. What I forgot to mention earlier is that I'm installing this 3 quarter inch by half inch T before the filter to connect my outside hose bib, as I don't want to filter the water for my garden or lawn. This line above the unit is the bypass. In the case you want unfiltered water, the unit is leaking, or you don't have replacement filters. Thank you. 
Now that all the piping is complete, it's time to install the gauges. It is important to tighten them in with the brass block at the base of the gauge. Tightening them in with the gauge itself can lead to damage. Wear a pair of clean gloves when handling the filter or thoroughly washed hands. I'm choosing to use a one micron filter for this housing. Start the filter housing off hand tight and then snug up with the supplied filter wrench. Before you turn the water back on, make sure all the valves are in the closed position. What I'm doing here is slightly opening the upstream and downstream valves, slowly filling the filter housing. Once the filter housing is purged of air, close the downstream valve and allow the assembly to pressure up. This is a great time to check for leaks. With no leaks present, open the upstream valve fully and slightly open the downstream valve. The faucet should still be open from earlier. Allow the water to flow until it's steady without air. Open the downstream valve fully and then close the faucet. Though the gauges are optional on this install, it helps determine if the filter needs replacement. If the downstream gauge is reading much lower than the upstream, then the filter is clogged and requires replacement. The camera angle is making the gauges look off, but both are reading 50 psi, which is perfect for this residence. To bypass the filter, you simply close the downstream and upstream valve and open the bypass valve. I know it's hard to see the difference between the two through the camera, but if you look near the top, you'll notice a lot more particles suspended on the unfiltered side. Well guys, thanks for watching, and like always, if this video helped you out, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.